So you may have been practicing for your college placement exam and you realize the questions are a little bit complicated and you're probably finding the questions a little bit complicated because you haven't practiced basic solving equations in a while. So let's go over a few questions where we can just practice the basic skills, build your foundation so that when you go back to your practice problems, you feel a little bit secure in what you're doing. All right, so we have 2x plus 4 equals 10. So this is a two-step equation. The reason why it's called a two-step equation is because there's two steps in order to solve. The goal is always, when you're solving any equation, is to get the variable or the letter by itself. Get the letter by itself. Okay? So in this case, the variable is x. So before you even start moving things around and trying to figure out how to get the x by itself, First, ask yourself, why isn't the x by itself? So what do I mean by by itself? Well, there is an equal sign, and then there's two sides to the equal sign. There is a left side and there's a right side. The first thing that you have to do is identify which side is the variable on. In this case, the variable is only on the left side, so that's perfect. The second thing is you need to determine what numbers are causing the x to not be by itself on the left side. So the 2 is causing the x to not be by itself on the left side, and the 4 is causing it to not be by itself on the left side. So those are the two numbers that we have to think about getting rid of. So I'm going to pause here and I'm going to ask the question that I answer the question that I get often, which is how come we're not trying to move around the 10? Well, the 10 is on the opposite side of the equal sign. It's not affecting the left side where the variable is. So we're not going to worry about it. We're not trying to move it to the other side. We're going to leave it alone. That's the biggest mistake that I see students making. They try to move around the side that doesn't need to be moved around. Only focus on the side that has the variable. Okay, so let me erase some of these extra notes so that we can have our focus and attention on what we're doing. So a silly thing that I like to teach, and it's just the way that I learn, is that there's a two and the four that we wanna get rid of. Well, what do we have to get rid of first, the two or the four? So the way that I like to describe it is you get rid of the number that's not attached to the variable. So the number that's not attached to the variable is the four. So I like to describe it this way. I know it's corny, but this is how I like to do it. The four is the neighbor. The neighbor is in your house, but not attached to you. The easiest thing to do is to ask your neighbor to go home. So we're gonna ask the four, the four that's not attached to the X, to go home. How do we ask it to go home? We do the opposite of what's happening. So in this equation, the four is being added. So to get rid of the four, you need to do the opposite of what's happening. So you would subtract the four. So I'm gonna subtract the four from both sides. Because it's an equation, whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. So let's go ahead and see what happens. There's nothing to take away from the two X. You leave it as two X. Plus four minus four, they cancel each other out. So you're left with nothing. And then 10 minus four is equal to six. So you got rid of the neighbor. You sent the neighbor home. The neighbor was the number that is not attached to the X but it was in the neighbor, it was in the ex's house. It was on the left side, okay? So now you have to ask yourself, what number is now causing the X to not be by itself? It's the two. Now the two is attached to the X. So I like to pretend like the two is either the best friend or the sibling. <laughs> now it's a little bit harder to ask the sibling or the best friend to go home because they're really attached, they're attached to one another. So again, now that you asked the neighbor to go home, that was a little bit easier. Now you got to get the best friend to go home. So how do you get the best friend to go home politely? Because you still want it to be your best friend later. So right now, what is happening between the two and the X? Anytime you have a number and a variable next to each other attached, there is an invisible multiplication sign in between. They are being multiplied. So anytime you see two X, that's two times X. If you saw 3x, that's 3 times x. If you saw 10x, that's 10 times x. So in this case, 2x would be 2 times x. 
So then how do we get the best friend to go home? You do the opposite of what's happening. What's the opposite of what's happening? If it's being multiplied, the opposite would be dividing. You divide by two on both sides and X would be equal to three. Okay, so some people, they will say, well, why did you divide by two and not by six? Again, whatever friend or um, neighbor you're trying to send home, that's the number that you either divide by or add or subtract by. So because we're trying to send the two home, we divide by the two. And because we were trying to send the four home, we subtract by the four. Okay, so now we were able to get x is equal to three. So that's a little thing that I like to do. I know it seems silly, but it's something that will help you to remember. Because when you take your college placement tests, when you're in your high school algebra class, when you're in your college algebra class, when you're just learning algebra from scratch, it can be a little bit difficult to say, okay, I know this is my goal, but how do I go about doing it? Just think, what's, what is causing the x to not be by itself? Is it the four or is it the two? Okay, great. And then how do I send it home? Who should be sent home first? Send home the neighbor first because it's not attached. Then send the best friend home because it is attached. And you just have to do something slightly different for each side. Let's go ahead and go over another example. All right. So again, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this equation into a left side and a right side with the equal side dividing it. So now I'm gonna ask myself, what side is the variable on? Is the variable on the left side or is the variable on the right side? In this case, the variable is on the left side, perfect. So I'm only gonna be dealing with sending home the numbers on the left side that is causing the X to not be by itself. So what numbers are causing the X to not be by itself? The three and the two, perfect. So can we identify them as whether they're the neighbor or if they're the best friend? Okay, so the two is not attached to the X, so the two must be the neighbor, and the three is attached to the X, so the three must be the best friend. So who are we sending home first? We're sending home the two. So let me erase this so that we can stay focused. How do we send home the two? Well, you ask yourself, what is happening to the two right now? Because the two is being added right now, you do the opposite of what's happening. So the opposite of adding two would be subtracting two. So I'm gonna subtract two from both sides. Three X remains the same. The twos cancel each other out and you're left with 11 minus two, which is equal to nine. Perfect. So now you've asked the neighbor to go home. Do you remember what you have to do next? Yes, I know it's silly, but you gotta get rid of the best friend, but you gotta do it in a nice way so that they still are your best friend. You just, just gotta do it. Again, you have to do the opposite of what's happening now. Because the three and the X are close by each other, they're attached, do you remember what's happening? Yep, they're being multiplied, three times X. So the opposite of multiplication is what? Division, excellent. So we're gonna divide both sides by three. We're dividing by the number that we're trying to get rid of. The best friend is the three, so we're dividing by the three. And we have X is equal to nine divided by three, and nine divided by three is three. So X is equal to three. Okay, so I'm hoping that what I'm teaching you is helping you out. I'm hoping you're starting to see that, okay, you only deal with the numbers that are on the side of the variable. The goal is to get the variable by itself. What is it causing the variable to not be by itself? These are the numbers that are causing the variable to not be by itself and so on and so forth. Let's switch this up just a little bit, okay. So now we're looking at this equation and it's a few numbers less. So we just, again, we're gonna do the same concept. Our goal is to get the variable by itself. Is the variable on the left side or is on the right side? The variable is on the left side, perfect. So now we have to look and ask ourselves, what is causing the X to not be by itself? The four, okay? There's only one number this time. So now you gotta ask yourself, is the four the neighbor? Is the four the best friend? In this case, the four is the best friend. Why? Because it's squished together. Okay, so now that they're squished together, do you remember what's happening there? They're being multiplied. Perfect, so how do we get rid of the four? We divide, so we're gonna divide both sides by four. So X is going to be equal to 24 divided by four, which is six. Great job. Okay, so again, these are situations when the X or the variable is only on one side of the equation and when you either have two numbers that you're getting rid of or if you have one number that you're getting rid of. I hope this video was able to slow it down a bit 
so that you guys were able to just build your skills, your basic algebra skills. Don't get overwhelmed by learning algebra. Learning algebra doesn't have to be difficult. Don't be afraid of saying some silly things because the silly things, they stick in your mind and they help you to remember and they come to mind when you're test. They also may come to mind when you're dreaming, but I'm sorry about that, but we just have to remember. So don't be afraid to just come up with things at work, remembering the little silly phrases, the send the friend home first, then get rid of your best friend, do the opposite of what's happening now, and you guys will do great on your tests. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.